Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations with a bright spring layout I created to record an Easter memory. This page was a fun one to make using a variety of cut apart pieces. Today I'm going to show you a few ways that you can use your cut apart pages or pocket pages on a layout. I can't wait to share how this comes together. I have these sweet photos of this little one hunting for Easter eggs and the flowers on her dress match these floral paper snips perfectly. I'm going to be using these flowers today along with this happy day title, the bunnies and some butterflies. I'll be pairing these with one of the newer Simple Stories collections filled with bright colors that are perfect for Easter. As I create this page, I'll bring in a few more items, which I'll add to the supply list in the description below. I'm going to start by layering some 4x6 cut apart cards under my photo. These have a black and floral frame around the edges, and they're going to contrast well with the bright colors in the photos. The cut apart on the left has a blank area where I plan on adding my journaling. So I want to make sure that this remains uncovered. Below the photos, I'm going to layer some pink scallop borders, and then I'll lay the title perspective over on the right opposite of the journaling. Now that I have an idea where some of the basic pieces are going to go, I'm going to mark these with a pencil so that I can add my stenciling. I'm using the honeycomb bee stencil on this page, before I add the ink, I want to mask off the top of the stencil so that I don't make too much of a mess, and I'm going to use a magnet to hold it in place on my glass board. With a blending brush, I'm adding Lost Shadow ink to the honeycomb image to create a soft texture. I tend to be a little heavy handed, so I like to tap my brush off into the lid before I blend it across the stencil. I'm not filling in the image completely, just some bits here and there above and below where the photo will sit. The images are going to be a very subtle soft gray on the page, and they're going to create a nice backdrop for all the florals I'm going to add. Now that the stenciling is complete, I'm going to bring back those cut apart pages for my layout. At this point, I have a genius idea to cut out a little phrase on that cut apart page and layer it over my photo. I used a craft knife to carefully cut out around the sides and tucked the photo under the little phrase, and it looks so cute. Once these framed pieces were in place, I added softer floral patterns in the background. I wanted to bring in some more florals. So I cut out this journal card, and then I fussy cut around the wreath. The wreath has floral colors that match her dress, and it also is going to bring in some blue to the page, which pairs beautifully with the pink that I'm adding. I wasn't too perfect about the cutting because I knew that most of this would be hidden or covered up. It's just going to create a little anchor for my embellishment cluster, and gives me an opportunity to use up one of the cut apart elements that came in the kit. Now I'm going to start adhering those scallop borders together. I plan on adding some stitching to these, so I'm using liquid adhesive that won't gum up my sewing machine. If you know that you're going to be stitching over some patterned paper, you don't want to use a tape runner or double sided tape, because that can gum up the gears within your machine. I cut these scallop borders from a pink grid pattern and a pink polka dot pattern, and I'm alternating the patterns as I adhere them together. I am also trying to offset the scallops a bit. This creates more of a horizontal flow than vertical, which is what I want on this page. These scallops are going to sit below the photos, and I'm layering a tag over the top with the title. Both the scallops and the title are pink in color, so I needed to add something as a background and this tag was a perfect fit. At the top of the page, I'm going to bring in some more black with a floral strip, 
And then below that, I'm going to bring in some more blue with another scallop border. I'm going to go off camera and add a little stitching to my page, and then I'll bring in the embellishments. I added some stitching to the scallop border strips and across the top of the page. I also adhered my photos in place on some foam backing sheets and ended up adhering down the little phrase that I took all that time to cut out. I attempted to fix it, but it was stuck tight, so I'm going to have to find a way to cover up that partial phrase. I've already cut out a few of these florals from my paper snip sheet because you didn't need to see me fussy cutting all of these out. Over the top of the wreath, I am layering some soft pinks and a yellow floral. I realize that I covered up most of my stenciling here with that wreath, so I brought the stencil back in and added a few more little images there at the top. Below the photos, I'm going to add that tag and some more florals. I'm going to add a few pinks and a yellow one here, and then tuck some leaves around the edges. I like to create directionality with my leaves. I know that sounds odd, but leaves look like arrows to me, so I try to point them towards the items I want people to focus on. Above the photos, I added a blue sticker phrase with a butterfly to fill in that gap, and then I attached my title perspective in place. Below the title, I'm going to add a little phrase that says, love this, in the same color of blue as the phrase above. This is starting to form my visual triangle around the photo. Now I'm going to add a third cluster of florals. I need to cut out a few more pieces from the paper snips. If you've not used paper snips before, they are made of sturdier cardstock, which makes cutting and layering much easier. I also like that there's plenty of room between the images so that I can cut around the pieces. I like to leave a little white around mine, but these aren't too detailed, so you could cut right up to the edge if you wanted to. I started layering the flowers on the corner of the photo over the phrase that I wanted to cover, but the flowers started encroaching into the space where I wanted to add my journaling, so I moved them over to the edge of the scallop strips. These gave me some more breathing room and a place to add an adorable little bunny. In this space, I'm bringing in more pink and yellow floral to match the other clusters on the page. I'm also bringing in multiple colors of leaves in odd numbers. I like how the paper snip sheet has a few different colors and shapes of leaves that I can add to my page. While I finish adhering these in place, I would love it if you tapped that subscribe button and let me know that you're new here. If you're enjoying today's video, go ahead and let me know in the comments or tap that thumbs up icon. To complete my visual triangle, I brought in a blue butterfly perspective near the florals. Those bunny perspectives were just so cute that I decided I needed another one near the title. I did have to use a little bit of foam tape to hold it up over the perspective, but I really like how this looks. Now I need to find a way to cover that little mistake I made with the phrase. I brought in a few different pieces of ephemera in pink and tan and blue. If I add another bold, colorful item to this space, it's going to create a fourth embellishment cluster, and I don't want that. After a few minutes of fussing, I decided on a simple black and white sticker. Unfortunately, it wasn't wide enough to cover the phrase below it, so I cut a light blue gingham strip of paper and tucked it underneath. This fits the page perfectly and didn't create any disruption in the flow of the layout. As I was adding the rest of the embellishments to the page, I brought in that stencil one more time 
and added a few images to the lower left side, which brought some texture under that cluster of flowers. I also added two more butterfly perspectives to the layout. These little pink perspectives are so cute and they match her little bucket that she's collecting the eggs in. At this point, I went a bit off script. This is all haphazard and random, which is so unlike me. I usually have a plan and stick to the plan, but today I didn't. Many of the patterns on the page have some scribbles and vintage script, and I wanted to bring that to the layout. I grabbed a few rub-on transfers with gray and black typeset and added them around the areas where I had some stenciling. These also have some fun blue-green splashes of color, which match the other elements I have on my page. I have discovered that these transfers can be removed with a sand eraser, so if this impromptu creative burst had gone wrong, I could have fixed it. When I was done, I liked the way it looked, and it gave the page some needed color and texture in the background. It also brought more of that vintage look to the page, which was needed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding the rest of these to my layout, type up my journaling, and then I'll share the completed page. I printed my journaling onto some vellum and stitched it in place with a little pink flag. I also added a pink plaid strip near the edge of the tag to separate it from the scallop strips and give it a more finished look. With all this pink on pink, I needed a few more items to help the title stand out. So I added a chipboard heart and tied on some twine. I'm going to share a few close-up photos of this layout so that you can see all the lovely details. Today's project records a sweet Easter memory, so I filled this page with bright colors, spring florals, and adorable little bunnies and butterflies. I was able to use up quite a few of my cut-apart elements on this layout, and created some lovely elements for my page with those pieces. If you are one who enjoys pinning projects to inspiration boards, I have added these photos to my website for you to save. Thank you again for joining me as I created another scrapbook layout and shared a memory with you. If you have any questions about this project or the supplies listed below, feel free to leave me a comment. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.